What Dr. Lutz is referring to is uh, two major trials that went on probably five to seven years ago uh, that involved two drugs. One was dutasteride, uh, which is the trade name Avidart, and another drug was uh, Proscar Finasteride. These drugs have been around for a long time, and what these trials did was they gave the patients finasteride or dutasteride, and then uh, I believe it was about four years later, they biopsied all the patients. Okay, so it was one of our best pictures into the natural p pathology or pathogenesis of prostate cancer in a large series of patients. And what's interesting about these trials in both of these is we saw a 25% reduction in the incidence of prostate cancer. Okay, so that is huge that we have a drug that can prevent prostate cancer. The problem was at the time, and we'll go into the details of this, was of those patients that did get prostate cancer in the PCPT trial, there was a higher incidence of high-grade disease. Most people, most urologists, and we'll, we'll put Dr. Scher on the spot, don't believe that. I don't believe that Dr. Scardino, most of the major oncologists around the country feel that this was a statistical error. The study was never powered to detect the degree or, or the stage of the cancer, the aggressiveness of the cancer, it was powered to detect cancer. And when the studies were reanalyzed and looked at, this was most likely a statistical error or just a problem. The study was never designed to look at that. So with that being said, here we got two drugs that show a 25% reduction in prostate cancer, but they're rarely used. Okay, and I think that's the, one of the biggest questions in urology, why haven't urologists gravitated towards the use of these drugs? In my practice, I think they're great. I believe the data, I try to use them as much as I can, but I think overall they're underutilized. I think the risk of high-grade disease is overstated in, in a statistical error, and we probably should use more of these drugs in our practice in patients who have enlarged prostates and who are at risk for prostate cancer because you can reduce their prostate cancer by 25 percent. Dr. Scher? So I'll just add a, a couple of points to that. These uh, two drugs that Dr. Heffern's talking about, they're actually approved for the treatment of enlarged prostate and for the treatment of uh, urinary symptoms like slow stream and frequently going to the bathroom. And we urologists probably use those drugs relatively frequently for that purpose. And having an enlarged prostate doesn't particularly put you at risk for having prostate cancer. They're really two separate diseases. As a man ages, you can get one or the other or both, and they're, they're not really that much biologically related to each other. But these drugs that we use for treating enlarged prostate, they do help in the long run with reducing these urinary symptoms. So we feel comfortable using them for that purpose. The question is, should we use them solely for the purpose of preventing prostate cancer? I only have one or two patients who are taking the drug that actually have a small prostate, not much urinary symptoms, and just taking these drugs solely for the purpose of preventing prostate cancer. There is some concern over the high-grade disease. Uh, that, that's one thing. But the other thing is that these studies show that in terms of preventing prostate cancers, it generally prevents, statistically speaking, if you take these medications, the low-grade prostate cancers, the, what we call the Gleason-6 prostate cancers. Those cancers aren't that much concern anyway, and if a patient is ultimately diagnosed with a low-grade Gleason-6 prostate cancer, chances are we're not gonna be operating or doing surgery anyway. Probably we'd be putting the patient on, on active surveillance, which we may be talking about here in a second. So those drugs are good for enlarged prostate and lower urinary tract symptoms, but they haven't gained a lot of traction for the, purely for the prevention of prostate cancer.